In this tutorial, we're just going to look at a few of the features that you can use to format a text box, both the box itself and the text inside. There's a lot of different adjustments you can make. I'm just going to focus on some of the basic ones that can make your text box look really good fairly quickly. <clears throat> so the first thing we'll do is we'll draw the box. And so this tool here, where you see the T, there's actually two of them. There's a type tool and a type on a path tool, which we might take a look at later. And that's the tool that allows you to both draw the box that you want to type in and then place it where you want in the document. And we talked about guidelines previously in the, in the other tutorial. So I can draw my text box in any shape, but I want to match it up to the guidelines following my one pica rule on all sides up to the margin. Now if I want to resize it, I can click on it with my black arrow and I can just click and drag You see it turns to that double black arrow and I'll drag it down to match my guidelines. Once I've done that, you can see with the black arrow there's this toolbar up here that has a lot of different features on it. And the ones we'll focus on are the adjustments of the stroke and the fill color. So stroke is the outline and fill, of course, fills up the inside. So the first thing I have to do is double click on this icon right here. You can see a red line through, through it, meaning there's no color so far. So if I double click on it, I get this window and I can choose from any color that I see on the screen as I slide this up and down. So if I wanna match my colors up here, I've got uh, blues, I can do that. So maybe I'll go with sort of a dark green and no, I'm going to do text. I should do a light color. So we'll go up something like that for now. So it puts that fill color in and fills it up. So it's basically a background and when I type the text will go over top of the green. If I want to outline it with a different color, I can click on this right here and it will create an outline. It's the same color right now. So what I'm going to do is double click and I'm going to scroll down and choose a darker green. Click OK and there's my outline. So it's five points which is about that uh, thickness. It's uh, uh, Picas and points are very different measurements. Picas are much bigger. Points of course are much smaller. I can also just click here and choose from this list and choose whatever number I want to. So if I want to temporarily see what it looks like um, so far, I can go to preview and that's what it will look like. Now once I put a stroke on, I can actually adjust it so the stroke is inside the line, so to speak, by resizing it slightly like that. So if I don't want to go over into the, the one pica area I have, I can readjust it if I want to. So now it lines up nicely along the edge here. And the stroke is inside that area of my, <coughs> excuse me, of my guidelines and my margin. And it lines up nicely over here. Now I can also put some special effects on it. So over here we have this window here. And we have four options here, object, stroke, fill, and text. So object will put a special effect on the whole shape. Stroke, just the line. Fill, just the inside. And then text, of course, we'll take a look at. But it'll put the effect on the text. So this is an automatic drop shadow. It's a very common feature that people like to put in. It gives it a bit of a 3D effect. So you can just click the button and we'll put in the default one. I can also make it semi-transparent by sliding this up and down. This is where all the features are. And so we'll take a look at two of them. We'll take a look at bevel and emboss. So I click on that, it highlights it in blue and it checks it. And this preview button allows me to see exactly what it's gonna look like before I click OK. So you have all these different settings here. So you have four different styles, they're all slightly different. You have three different techniques, so if I change it to hard, you can make, see it stands out a little bit more. And then I can do down, 
so it looks like a bit of a hole, and up, so it looks like it's raised up above the surface a little bit. You can change the size, make it bigger or smaller, I can soften it so it looks like it's a smoother rounded surface, which is kind of like this one here, only you have a little more control over it. And then you can control the depth as well. So I can make it just real subtle or 100% stands out a little bit more. I can change the angle. So it changes the look. It's kind of like a flashlight shining. shining. You change the source and create some shadows and such things like that. Right? <clears throat> uh, you've got two different uh, colors, the highlights and the shadow. So the dark part here is the shadow. And right now it's gray. And I can put different modes in there. Uh, kind of like filters in Photoshop and it just slightly changes the look of the bevel and emboss and then I can change the transparency to solid or really subtle and hard to see and then of course I can click here and I can change the colors as well and you have your some default colors here that you can use so if I wanted all green I could do that Okay, and then you can see that the filter has a few for that as well. So lots of different options there for changing the look of your bevel. The other one we'll take a look at is the uh, basic, let's take a look at the feather. Feather is kind of like a blending option. And so you can change the width of the feather and you can see as I make it larger, kind of blends everything in. It's kind of a feature where it's solid and then it gradually fades out into transparent. That's the idea of a feather. And so you've got different settings there as well. You can do rounded corners, diffuse corners, sharp corners. So it changes the feel of those corners. Uh, the choke, uh, again, it um, kind of hardens the edge there. Uh, and so it increases and decreases the amount of feathering that's going on there. And then you can add noise to it, and that just kind of makes it all pixelated like that. So if you want that feel to it, you can. Right? And of course, the drop shadow has different settings as well. I can change the light source angle. Um, you turn on the use the global light feature. You can change the direction of it, the transparency of it, the size. The spread is kind of uh, increases and decreases the thickness of it, and then you can apply noise to it as well if you wanted that feel to it. Right, so those are some of the options for formatting. They can all be applied to text as well. Now, if I want to adjust the text, I go back to my type tool and I click inside the text box, and up here I get a new toolbar, and there it's fairly long, so there's two buttons here. Um, so the text options go to here where you can set the look of your text and then the paragraph options are here and um, there's a couple more here like um, hyphenating this aligns your text to some degree so I'll go back to my font choices and I can choose a font so we'll go with something fairly simple you can see there I've got a ton of them on mine and find something, uh, well maybe we'll do this one. I can change the size here, so if I want it fairly large. Um, I've got things like, well let me type something first. So my text, oh, I'll put a three in there. So that's my text. Uh, I can highlight it like I would any other. I can change the size. And you have arrows here, as always, to increase and decrease. If I don't like the font, it doesn't really stand out a lot. Go to something fun like that. Um, you'll notice that also right below there's there's um, this regular um, menu here. So if I do something like uh, Arial, I've got lots of different options. So bold, italic, um, narrow, those typical ones you find in Office and other word processing programs. I'm going to pick one that's a little more fun and then I can change my, so I've got uh, all capitals, 
I can do superscript and subscript with these buttons here. I can do all capitals, but uh, except for the first one, these are smaller. And then strike through, underline, and those options there as well. The other one that we'll take a look at, um, you can kind of play around with other ones if you want, see what they do. But I'm going to change the color. So if I want to change the color of the text, I can do that just simply by highlighting it or setting it before I type and choosing my color and then taking a look at it. There's two ways that you can adjust where the text is. In fact, I'm going to use this one up here instead. So I've got these two buttons, or these one with my black arrow, I've got these four buttons here that I where I can align the position of it inside the text box. So bottom, middle, top. And you just kind of have to play around with it um, to see. And then this is double spacing. So whichever one kind of places it where you want to, you can play around with that. And the size of the text box matters too as well. If I drag it up a little bit, then of course it'll cut off the top and the bottom as well. Okay, so aligning it to the middle and then resizing your text box to fit. You can see it's a very, um, there's a lot of different options you have there. And so I'm going to click it up at the top. It seems to, this text seems to have a padding up at the top. And so pretty even from top to bottom in terms of my spacing there. The other option, of course, is to go back to the text tool and you've got um, left, center, right. Uh, if it's a paragraph, you can do things like justify, um, and then you can have it, um, or, or if you're on the left, um, it makes it a straight, uh, kind of lined up on the right-hand side, and then your, um, your indents and things are on the left. So you have those features there as well. So that's pretty much all you'll need to know for text uh, fonts. If you want to put special effects on them, you can as well. So I click on my text box with the black arrow and I can go down to text and then I can put things like a drop shadow on the text. Uh, I can bevel and emboss it as well. Um, it's a little hard to see, but it kind of blends some other colors in and makes it basically round in like it's um, three-dimensional popping up from the stage right so all those things that applied to the text box can also apply to your text so I can put in a drop shadow and then change it got different features here oh sorry click now I uh, just made the classic mistake so I need to click on the drop shadow menu here so I can see the drop shadow on my text. And then I can go in and change the, the position of it, the distance away, the transparency. Um, and so you can just create different effects on your text there. They're really great for titles and those kinds of things, but for paragraphs, you don't want to use these options because you'd be, want to be able to read it. But these are fun to have for some of your titles. So that's pretty much all that you'll need to know for getting started working with text and text boxes. Of course, you don't have to put a fill color in if you don't want to. Um, the nice thing about uh, these colors, if you want to use this color again, what you can do is double click and then click on add CMYK, which stands for cayenne, magenta, yellow, and black. I can add that swatch so I can save it essentially. Click OK and then I can choose it from this list here. So there's that swatch I just saved. It saves them in order top to bottom. So if I wanted to apply it to this text box, all I have to do is go down to the bottom, find it, and it will apply it and it will match perfectly. They look a little bit different because of the color of the text and the, the effects I put on it, but essentially it's the same color. So there you have it, text boxes, all you need to know, hopefully, 